What's up guys, JS2 Sense here, and I'm bringing you an unboxing kind of a video here, because I'm gonna be building something on this channel that I have never built in the last 10 years that I've been doing the channel. Well, I have built it, just not on the channel. Um, also, too, you're gonna hear loud beeping and some clanging and noises. They are literally building right there, still. They're on the other side of that wall using a lift and all that. So if you hear construction sounds, it just adds to the ambiance of something cool happening. The new XG321UG Mini LED 32-inch 4K panel from ViewSonic blurs the lines between gaming and professional monitors. Gamers will enjoy super smooth gameplay due to its 144Hz refresh rate and integrated NVIDIA G-Sync Ultimate and Reflex technology, VESA Display HDR1400, and super black levels due to the 1152 Mini LED backlighting zones. While industry professionals can edit content with peace of mind due to 10-bit processing, 98% DCI P3 color gamut, and 99% Adobe RGB. To see why the XG321 321UG is the perfect dual purpose monitor, follow the link in the description below. We are down to our last 10 terabyte Iron Wolf drive, Iron Wolf Pro drive. Um, and I mentioned as part of this um, renovation that I want to put a server rack right there where that ladder is. I already got most of the components. I'm actually waiting on the rack to be delivered tomorrow, but I've got our UPS, uh, our, for redundancy backup. I've got our full rack mounted uh, surge protector. I've got our punch panels so that we can finally have all of our ethernet drops and stuff properly labeled. We're running cat sex, cat sex A? Yes, it's, it is sexy cable. We are running cat six A everywhere in here so that we can have full 10 G or 10 gigabit connection uh, with our switch. <clears throat> we'll probably do a video about that switch anyway because we're gonna switch out the fans so it doesn't sound like a server by itself. Um, but what I wanted to show you today is our server We've been running Unraid in here now since 2019. And, you know, in the last three years, we filled up what? Filled a little over half of it? Yeah, about 22 terabytes out of 56. Yeah, so we filled up 22 terabytes out of 56. Not necessary to necessarily expand it yet. We did notice, though, that one of the drives have an exclamation point on Unraid saying it's starting to report some smart errors. And being the idiots that I am, because I built it, yeah, idiots, I have multiple personalities if you guys haven't noticed by now. Shut up, no you shut up. I'm just telling them the truth. They don't need to know. But we have one failing drive and we don't know which one it is because we didn't label any of them. So we have one drive left and we don't know which one to replace it with. So here's what's going through my mind when I was piecing together this server rack. I just want to build a proper for you server chassis to go in there. And that's what we're gonna take a look at today. This is the Rosewill for you 15 bay um, for a server blade chassis that's gonna be installed. So we're gonna prob, I was thinking about swapping the internals. We Remember, we're using the Fractal Design, or the Fractal Define 7, I think it is. Cause it had the, it's the only chassis we had that had the most three and a half inch bays that we knew of. I think I'm only running eight drives in there and that was because of some of the limitation of the SATA controllers that were on the motherboard. And I am using an adapter for, I can't remember what the interface is, but I do have a four SATA, it breaks out into a single plug. I can't remember what the plug is, and that's showing how stupid I am when it comes to this stuff. But let's take a look at the chassis. I know right now a lot of people are probably gonna start really um, typing away on exactly how we should be doing our setup. You need to remember, when Linus shows the crazy like petabyte systems and stuff that he, that he built, he has numerous editors accessing that data at the same time. They are all editing right off of that server. So is Phil, but Phil is, it would be Phil and sometimes me at the same time accessing that data. And having, you know, two, 300 megabyte per second connectivity um, is perfectly fine. It'll be more than that on 10G. Right now I'm stuck at about 100 megabytes because I'm still on gigabit switch, uh, where Phil is direct connected with 10G to the server. I am not because the little switch that we're using now only has uh, two 10 gigabit ports one to the server, one to fill. So I will be getting an upgrade personally. So now that I've rationaled, let's go ahead and take a look at this because I'm a... I haven't built a server blade, like rack mounted system for the channel ever. I have worked on these for work in the past, but never on the channel. Now I went with the Rosewill because of the cost effectiveness of it. Um, Jeez, it's beefy, and that's why I had to go with 265 pound shelves to support it. Um, I intentionally didn't put this on a rail system. So when it comes to server mounted stuff, or rack mounted stuff, if you're dealing with like a data center or you've got a ton of systems that may need 
regular maintenance and such. Our uptime on our server is like 300 days or something right now, and the only time it went down before was because we had a power outage. You can put rails on this, where you can literally slide them out, lift the lid, access slide back. That's not something that I need because of the fact that we are not, we, if I showed you the inside of our server right now, I think there's spiders living in it. It is the most forgotten abuse system that just will not die. But that's Unraid. Also too, this is protective film. It's not blue on the top, although I think it would look kind of cool blue. Um, we got four screws on the side that keep the lid on, and that just slides off. Now here's, oh these are not hot swap. I thought these were hot swap. Dang, I thought I got the hot swap one. I don't know, maybe I'll switch this out. Whatever, we'll take a look anyway. The thing that this, this allows though is, if we put it in like a standard <laughs> case orientation, we have three intake fans on the front. We've got five, 10, 15 drive bays right here. The fans, I'll probably switch out to something else. These are all just Molex. Um, should we go RGB? You know how mad people would be seeing RGB fans in the server just over there just going in the video? I do feel like we should do it. That would be sick. Because whatever motherboard we use is gonna for sure have RGB. Three mid fans here, three intake fans on the front. Would still be plenty of airflow to keep the drives cool because we're not a data center. They're not being accessed constantly. Um, you know, it's not a gaming server or anything like that. It's literally just a big NAS is all it is. Just big network attacks attached, uh, network attack storage. <laughs> attack! <laughs> it's just network attached storage uh, that allows us to edit off of and store all of our footage. But what, the reason why I went with this though is it uses Standard motherboard, right? ATX, it even fit in EATX if I decide to put like, I don't know, Threadripper or something in here. So unnecessary. I also have started thinking like, it's probably a good thing that we don't have fast upload here because we're stuck in a Spectrum coaxial uh, community that only has 35 megabit up that we get about 45 effective on. But if I had like gigabit by gigabit mirrored or something, I would probably make like a Minecraft server or something for my kids to play on and would just connect here to the studio. Um, so many opportunities with fast storage that we just do not have. But let's take a look now how the drives and stuff come out. I could have swore I got the hot swap one, but clearly I did not. Uh, you know what, I mean, this is honestly just fine. We've never had to actually, these are all the drive mounts and stuff right here. We've never had to actually, until right now, actually you know, access a drive, which we don't even know which one is going bad. No, I think I literally have to, I think I, I think to access the drives, I literally have to. Take off the screws on the side, take the fans out, and then I can just go that. So that, that's not exactly the most accessible and easy, but that's, I think that's fine, honestly. This is one of those things where I'm just gonna have to experience it, you know, build it, and then if it becomes a complete pain in the butt, that's where we go, okay, we'll change it out. But I wanna keep a second NAS going for the super old archives. So our server box here, we keep calling it a server, it really is just a NAS. And I know that, that that triggers a lot of people to call it a server when a file server is just a NAS. But if we start finding ourselves going, okay, this is annoying if we have to access something in here, then we just replace it. So anyway, here's the connectors, very basic. This is a USB 3.0. We've got our, I thought this was like HD audio. I was like, why on earth would we have HD audio on this? That's it, yeah. So you just have to take out the fan array in the middle. So instead of piecing together new hardware, because Unraid really doesn't need, any CPU or anything I use today would be overkill. In fact, we were running a 7900X in our last server just because that platform was kind of dead. But anything I would use today, especially after the garage sale, like I don't, I just can't bring myself to do it. Like a 9900K or something, so great gaming CPU, I just can't bring myself to do that. So we're gonna take the parts out of the existing, this thing looks like it came out of a haunted house, okay? Look, oh God, the, the back panel's not even closed. Like it just opens up. That's not too bad. I did what? <coughs> Dust. <coughs> hmm. I did wire up things neatly though, as you can see, to like be able to easily identify. This is the SAS, the SAS to SATA adapter plug I was telling you about. So basically this just plugs into the U3, uh, USB 3.2 and turns it into four SATAs and that's how we ended up getting enough 
for our drives. And I just use those. And then this regular SATA plugs are just used for our cache drives. Oh God, that's our AIO. That is awful. But I'm thinking about putting an AIO in here because it dawned on me the AIO will mount to this. And there's plenty of room for it. I already did a little mock-up. So let's just switch over to sort of a montage style here as I sort of just get this thing built real quick. The only thing I don't have that I'm gonna order and I'll replace later is these 92 millimeter fans. I'll replace with some Noctua's or something. That way there'll be a little bit better airflow and they won't be loud and they won't be using Molex. And regarding like these $1 flimsy Molex fans that probably wouldn't have lasted very long anyway, So it's time for the moment of truth. Like I said, I just transferred everything over here. What we changed was the Titan X is now just a 750 Ti or 750, whatever. We, we only need that because there's no internal graphics on the 7900X that's in here. So yeah, let's uh, first boot, see if it works. We've got a uh, standby light showing up on the motherboard right there. And which one's, there's two power buttons. One's reset and one's power, but they're not labeled. There we go. <laughs> okay, everything turned on. We don't have any RGB showing though. I wonder if the RGB plug is backwards. I'll have to check that. As you guys can see, I obviously put the AIO in here. Um, dude, there's a ton of air coming out of there. Sounds kind of like a server. Hey, we got a post. Should boot right into our uh, Unraid though. Okay, cool. I just gotta figure out why we have no RGB because that is very important to me. I mean, if I took out the filter, that's what you would see right there. Look at that, RGB server. I can't be the first one. I'm certainly not the first one, but you know what? We'll just pretend I'm the first one. Look at that. Phil was asking why the fans were so loud. I, it's because literally there's drive cages right up against all the blades. And so you're hearing the turbulence of the blades actually just um, slicing through the air that has no cushion in front of it. So that's why they're loud like this. You know. It, there's still air coming through it. The bottom one is just free flowing. Dude, once I put that filter in front of it, dude, it blocks off so much airflow. But it gets dirty and dusty out here. So, and because it's not going in a, in, a, in a closed rack, it's an open frame, we'll see how the dust is. I might end up changing out our rack for a, a, a closed rack with a door and its own air conditioning system. Then it won't matter if I, I could take the dust filter off. These fans right here too, these, the 360 fans, are gonna be pulling in a lot of air through these side vents right here that are not vented, or, or uh, excuse me, they're not filtered in any way anyway. So they're gonna pull dust and dirt in there. So we're gonna have to somewhat regularly uh, open this up and blow it out. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid back on and that is the end of this video. It's also very dark and dramatic now, but that's cool because I now have an actual rack for this. And now I gotta put it together, the rack that is. I've got the UPS, I've got the switch, the patch panel. I just need now the room to run the wires to, which is almost done. In fact, let's give you guys a sneak peek of how that's going. So here's the office. Uh, you can see the walls up, the T-bar ceiling is in, all the supports and stuff for it. Uh, I really underestimated the amount of support it needs. It also has the seismic poles on there, which are rigid connected to the ceiling to give it not only weight support, um, but also to, to give it some rigidity in the case of an earthquake. Earthquakes are commonplace here, so we need it to be able to move with it. Our lighting fixtures, as you can, can see, are in. They are upfire LED that will basically wrap on that, that top reflector and push down at a pretty wide angle. They are dimmable, which is nice. 
All right, right now this is the coldest fixture on the planet because my vent is literally uh, like touching it and just blowing cold air onto it. But that's gonna be right here somewhere. Oh, another vent right there. And then this one here, they've got it kind of pushed off to the side and strapped up. It's gonna probably end up going more right here, but they're gonna be coming in tomorrow to finalize the connections for that. The black pole right there is our fire suppression system. So there's two there, two there, and two there. So we've got fire code adhered to. Um, and then you can see right here, we've got two of these poles that are just coming up and look like exhaust pipes. We are going to be basically making huge coils of wire, shoving them down through so they're pre-wired and we don't have to do it once the T-bar or once the full ceiling is in because that'll be a pain in the butt to try and do that and push them up and then get a ladder. Just do it now while we have full access to it. Um, and then you can see right there the uni box or whatever it's called. That's where all the armored conduit goes in for all the power. You can see we ran new power to it. Yeah, it's close. They said they'll be done, they'll be done Thursday of this week and then yeah, carpet goes in Friday, painter comes in next week, get it all painted and looking nice, and then we'll be making videos in here, which will be awesome. So anyway, thanks for all the support, guys. It's been fun. I'm really enjoying expanding our, our studio like this. It may not seem like much. It's just one room versus other guys that have full-on tens of thousands of square feet, but we make do with what we got. I like being small and intimate. <laughs>